Welcome back to the CryptoBot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, whales are closing long positions at the fastest rate since November last year, when the crypto market was topping out. So later in this video, I'll be talking more about that alongside other important patterns and indicators that we need to pay attention to. Definitely stick around. First of all, just giving you a quick update on what the US stock market did today. This right here is the NASDAQ 100 index on the daily time frame. And today we actually saw a bit of bearish price action as the NASDAQ 100 index ran into some technical resistance right at this technical price target coming into play at around 13.3K to 13.4K in the NASDAQ 100 index. And in fact, this is a crucial time for the stock markets because when you zoom out to the weekly time frame for the NASDAQ 100 index, what we can see here in the weekly RSI is that the RSI RSI has now retraced back towards that 50 level towards the middle of the RSI indicator. And this reset in the weekly RSI over the past two months or so, of course, came after the RSI ended into oversold territories. So at that stage, technically speaking, according to this indicator, we had very limited room to the downside in the immediate shorter term. So technically, we will do to see a bit of a relief here while the RSI resets back towards neutral levels, similar to what we saw in the first quarter of this year. But now that the RSI is back at those neutral levels, we're at a critical point where either the RSI starts breaking above that 50 level, flips us into new support, and obviously that would be the bullish scenario because during these massive bull markets, that's pretty much exactly what we see in the weekly RSI for the stock market. But during the bearish times, we basically see the exact opposite. We see the weekly RSI bouncing around in the lower half of the RSI indicator. And so usually during the bear market in the stock market, that 50 level in the weekly RSI acts as resistance and that's actually similar to what we saw back in the 2018 bear market in the stock market. Because obviously, as you can see here, the weekly RSI was bouncing around in the lower half of the RSI indicator. And the moment the weekly RSI made its way back up towards that 50 level, towards the center of the RSI indicator, that was simply resetting the RSI, giving us more room to the downside later on. So technically speaking, according to the weekly RSI, it is still possible that this situation could be very similar to the first quarter of this year, meaning that it could simply be a bear market rally. And that bearish scenario could play out if CPI inflation has not peaked already. So if CPI inflation is going to get a lot worse, then it's likely that this may not be over. But on the flip side, if CPI inflation has already peaked and we're due to see a slow decline in inflation, which is not to be confused with deflation because a slow decline in inflation means that the inflation rate is going lower and lower, but that also means that consumer prices are technically still rising, they just might not be rising as fast as what we've seen recently. Whereas deflation is when prices go back down and we're unlikely to see that anytime soon. And what's even more interesting is back around March this year, towards the end of the first quarter of this year, entering into the second quarter of this year, there were a lot of expectations back then that inflation might have peaked already back then. Because during that time, we did actually see one month where inflation came back down just for a month. And so markets began to rally, thinking that the peak in inflation is already over and things are starting to get better. But then obviously in the following months when inflation just continued to go higher and obviously did not peak back in March. Due to that and subsequently due to the Fed hiking interest rates higher than previously expected earlier in the year, the market went on another leg to the downside. So a lot of this really does depend on what CPI inflation does in the coming months. And speaking of CPI inflation, on Wednesday the 10th, we have new CPI data getting released. And in tomorrow's video, I'll go into more detail about what the market is expecting and what would be considered good or bad. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on so that you don't miss out on tomorrow's video. But anyway, getting into the Bitcoin part of this video, this right here is the daily Bitcoin chart. And right now, looking at the daily Bitcoin RSI, we can see that it's converging into a tightening range, usually meaning that a volatile move is coming sometime soon. Because if the daily Bitcoin RSI breaks above this downward sloping line of resistance, then in that case, if it puts in a new higher high, that would invalidate this previous bearish divergence. Emergence. But if the daily Bitcoin RSI breaks below this uptrend line of support, then obviously that would be a signal similar to what we saw these two previous times. And if you're looking at what happened to the Bitcoin price after we saw those two previous signals, obviously this was not good for the Bitcoin price. So as of right now, at the time of recording this video, it is too early to tell whether or not we're going to break above resistance or below support when it comes to the daily Bitcoin RSI. 
buy. So on this particular chart right here, I'm not making a bullish or bearish prediction as of right now. All I'm saying when it comes to this chart right here is that we need to keep an eye on the daily Bitcoin RSI because we're getting extremely close to seeing a break of one of these levels. And obviously, as soon as we see a break below support or above resistance, I'll be sure to keep you updated on this channel. And this potential volatile move coming sometime soon, according to the daily Bitcoin RSI, is also backed up by the Bollinger Bands on the daily timeframe. Because as I've been mentioning in my videos over the past couple of days, we're seeing a squeeze in the Bollinger Bands indicator for Bitcoin and Ethereum. And basically, what this means is usually when we see a squeeze in the Bollinger Bands indicator, that means we're getting pretty close to seeing an extremely volatile move coming sometime soon. In fact, if you're looking at the last three squeezes in the Bollinger Bands indicator, measuring from when the squeeze phase began to when the volatile move actually played out, it's usually around one to two weeks before we see the volatile move once the squeeze phase in this indicator has begun. And if you're new to the channel and you want to know more about this indicator and what it means for Bitcoin moving forward, check out my previous videos that I've posted recently on the channel. But anyway, zooming into the 12 hour Bitcoin chart and right now we're technically still forming this rising wedge pattern, which is technically more of a bearish pattern than a bullish pattern. And at the same time as this pattern forming over the past one and a half months or so, we've seen a slow decline in bullish momentum according to the 12 hour Bitcoin MACD. So basically, according to this 12 hour Bitcoin chart, we do actually have some early signs of this bullish trend that's lasted over the last one and a half months. We have some early signs of this trend starting to fizzle out. And the price level to watch here for a potential break to the downside would be coming into play at around 23.1k. So basically, if the Bitcoin price starts breaking below around 23,000, then that's how you know the Bitcoin price is starting to play out that more bearish scenario. But obviously, with a break of a significant level, we need to see some confirmation, such as at least a daily candle close when it comes to this chart right here. But if you want even more confirmation, then obviously a break below this previous low would be another bearish signal, and that previous low is coming to play at around 22.4k. And also in that potential scenario where the Bitcoin price breaks below this upward trending line of support, if we see a bounce back up to that level of support, then we need to see a rejection to further confirm the break to the downside. Because obviously, if we break to the downside and then break back above that level, that would simply invalidate any break here. But anyway, zooming into the shorter term, taking a look at the four hour Bitcoin chart, just recently, we've seen a short term pump to the upside, but this has pushed the four hour Bitcoin RSI up into overbought territories for the first time since this previous local high. So technically speaking, based on this indication alone, we will do to see a bit of a short term call off and this could continue considering the four hour Bitcoin RSI still has a little way to go before it gets back towards its neutral levels. And also, as of recording this video, we're seeing a very slight decline in the histogram within the four hour Bitcoin MACD. So technically speaking, that does show a lack in bullish momentum in the immediate short term, talking about the next few hours sort of thing. But as of right now, it hasn't actually confirmed another bearish cross. So technically speaking, it's still looking slightly more bullish than bearish at the moment. We're technically still in a short term uptrend when it comes to the four hour Bitcoin chart. It's just we do have some indicators here telling us that we're due to see a bit of a cool off just in the imminent short term. But overall, when you're talking about just the four hour Bitcoin chart and these short term bullish and bearish movements. Technically speaking, based on the fact that the Bitcoin price is holding above the five day moving average, also based on the fact that the four hour Bitcoin RSI is in an uptrend and we haven't yet seen another bearish cross in the four hour Bitcoin MACD, we're technically looking more bullish than bearish at the moment. We're just due to see a little bit of a cool off in the imminent short term, that's all. But anyway, getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this chart right here shows the Ethereum long positions on the Bitfinex exchange on the daily timeframe. And what we have seen, especially over the past one day is a massive decrease in these Ethereum long positions. In fact, just in the last one day, we've seen around 127,743 Ethereum leave these Ethereum long positions, which is equivalent to over 220 million US dollars. But if you're measuring from the peak in these Ethereum long positions that we saw a few weeks ago, we've seen over 360,300 Ethereum leave these Ethereum long positions, which is equivalent to over 630 million US dollars. So just over the last few weeks, we've seen around two thirds of a billion dollars worth of Ethereum long positions close on just this exchange. And just over the last 24 hours, we've seen nearly a quarter of a billion dollars worth of Ethereum long positions close. And what this means is big money, all of that money that was previously betting on Ethereum going to the upside has now essentially closed those bets. 
And the last time we saw the big money, the whales reduce their exposure to Ethereum at this pace was actually at the all-time high back in November last year. And obviously between now and then, there was one other time where we saw a lot of long positions close and that happened towards the end of March this year. And if we're looking at these Ethereum long positions next to the Ethereum price on the same daily time frame, this is what we see. And I covered this chart in recent videos on the channel, so I won't be spending too much time on it. But basically, as you can see here, back in November last year, when the whales exited billions of dollars from these long positions pretty much all at once, that was almost exactly at the all-time high for Ethereum. So they were longing Ethereum all throughout October, and then the moment the price of Ethereum started to top out, we saw a massive closure in these long positions. And once again, between then and now, there was one other time where we saw a decent amount of long positions close for Ethereum, and that occurred during the second half of March this year. So once again, during this time period, during the first quarter of this year, we saw the whales long Ethereum. And based on the prices back then, the whales fueled these long positions with around a billion dollars. And then very quickly towards the end of March, exited hundreds of millions of dollars of long positions. And that happened just before the price had another major dump. And basically, we're seeing almost the exact same thing happen right now in these long positions. So I must admit, this is a concerning indication for Ethereum at the moment on the daily time frame, but keep in mind this is not a short-term indication. This does not tell us we're due to see a massive dump in an hour or something like that. Because obviously looking at these previous examples, it actually took quite a few days. And in fact, back during March, it even took a couple weeks before the Ethereum price started to turn around. So once again, this is not an immediate short-term indicator. This is looking at these larger moves in the market. And also keep in mind, it is entirely possible for these traders to be wrong, obviously. But based on what happened, happened these last two times, personally, I would still be paying attention to this indicator because it is something important to keep in mind. And while we're on the daily Ethereum chart, taking a look at the daily Ethereum RSI, and just now with the recent daily candle close, we've now confirmed another bearish divergence. So we actually have a double bearish divergence here, where obviously we're seeing higher highs in the Ethereum price action when you're looking at the daily candle closes. But if you're looking at the daily Ethereum RSI, we're still seeing lower highs as of right now. So technically speaking, with the most recent daily candle close, this has just further confirmed the bearish divergence. And the only way to invalidate this bearish divergence is if the RSI breaks out into a new higher high. But considering we are not seeing that, at least as of right now, this is still a sign to be cautious at the moment. Because obviously, if you're looking at all of the other significant bearish divergences on the daily Ethereum chart, we can see what came next in the Ethereum price action. But once again, considering the fact that this is on the daily time frame, this is not an immediate short-term indicator. This does not tell us we're going to see a massive crash within the next few hours because this is talking about these larger moves in the market. And when you zoom into the 12-hour Ethereum chart, we're still actively forming this rising wedge pattern. And right now, this ascending line of support that we need to hold above is coming to play at around 1730 approximately because if Ethereum starts breaking below that level, then obviously that will be the bearish scenario potentially beginning to play out. And for further confirmation, a break below the previous level low sitting at around 1550 to 1560 would of course give us more confirmation but either way we would at least need to see a daily candle close below that level in order to initially confirm a break to the downside below around 1730 once again but if the price of ethereum sees another bounce from this level and heads back up towards this level of resistance then that is coming to play close to two thousand dollars where i would be expecting the next major resistance for ethereum if we see a successful bounce here but anyway zooming into the shorter term, taking a look at the 4-hour Ethereum chart. Right now, technically speaking, based on these indications, like I said on the 4-hour Bitcoin chart, we're looking slightly more bullish than bearish. As I have been saying for the past few days, you can go back and watch my videos if you want, but in the short term for Ethereum, technically the RSI in particular has been trending slightly more bullish than bearish for the last few days. And so due to that, obviously we've continued to see a little bit more short-term bullish price action. But if you're looking at the 4-hour Ethereum MACD, obviously this is showing a lack in momentum at the moment in the histogram in particular this is very flat and so due to that we're not seeing the same sort of explosive bullish moves in the price of ethereum as what we saw back here or back here for example so while these four hour ethereum price oscillators remain in the same state i'm still expecting the same thing for ethereum in the immediate short term as what i've been saying for the past few days 
which is slightly bullish price action, but with reduced momentum. But keep in mind what we've seen recently that we did not see over the past few days is that the four hour Ethereum RSI has just recently entered into overbought territories for the first time since this previous local high. And once again, like I said on the four hour Bitcoin chart, this usually means we're due to see a bit of a cool off, whether that's a sideways consolidation or a slight pullback like this, for example, but still that short term trend was overall bullish. So in summary, for the immediate short term trend at the moment, once again, I'm slightly more bullish, but I'm currently not expecting explosive bullish price action like this, for example, especially while the four hour Ethereum RSI is so close to those overbought territories where we're due to see a bit of a cool off. And if you want to maximize your profits in crypto, check out one of these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how to make money if the price is going either up or down. And the video in the bottom left shows you how to make money if the price is chopping around sideways. But anyway, that's everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next video.